Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about pin insulator and post insulator in power systems. So basically, the overhead conductors are supported on the poles with the help of insulator to prevent the current flow to earth. So in order to prevent the current flow from the conductor to earth, basically we are using insulators and we know that the overhead conductors are bare and they are not covered with any insulating coating or covering. So the insulator are a means of insulating medium which keep away the conducting that is the overhead conductors which keep away the overhead conductors from the supporting structures and you in other words you can say that the insulator act as a or insulator provide you a clearance between the overhead conductors and the metal works the therefore it is reasonable to say that the insulator play an important role in the successful operation of the power system so basically the insulator must have some following uh, characteristics so let us discuss what are the properties the insulator must have to be used for the to be used for insulating in the power system so basically if i discuss the characteristics so the the, the materials used for the manufacturing of insulator they must have high mechanical strength they should have high mechanical strength and they should have high dielectric strength and the insulating resistance should be high enough the insulating resistance should be high enough to prevent the leakage path so that no leakage path should be formed and for this reason in order to avoid the leakage path the ins the material should have high insulating resistance and the fourth thing is the materials should be non porous they should be non porous and they should be free from the impurities as well as cracks they should be free from the impurities as well as cracks and the fifth property they should have is they should have the high safety factor where the safety factor is nothing but the ratio of the puncture strength to the flash over voltage so basically the mechanical strength is required to uh, to sustain any sag values or to sustain the high storm or you can say ice loading effects so in order to sustain all those uh, effects mechanical strength must be required for the materials which are used for manufacturing the in, uh, insulators and the dielectric strength is required as we are using this insulator for overhead conductors of several kV and the leakage path must be avoided by using the materials of high insulating resistance and they should be non porous as well as they should be free from the impurities and they should do not have any cracks and as well as the safety factor which is nothing but the ratio of which is nothing but the ratio of the puncture strength to the flash or voltage so basically these are the properties to be maintained by the materials use it for manufacturing the insulators now let us discuss so the materials can be the porcelain or the glass or a stated or some any other composition can be used for the manufacturing of ins insulators let us move to the pin insulator so your pin insulator is the earliest developed overhead insulator it is the earliest developed overhead insulator and which is still popular in the power system network up to 33 kV so up to 33 kV it is still popular in the power system network and uh, the pin insulator can be a, your pin insulator can be a one part it can be a two part pin insulator or it can be a three part pin insulator so in a 11 kV system in 11 kV power system basically one part pin insulator is being used in 11 kV power system one part pin insulator is used one part I mean to say that is only one porcelain shell so only one porcelain shell is seen in the one part pin insulator and here the whole pin insulator is a single piece that is properly designed of porcelain or you can say glass or you can say stated or some other composition which are having the following properties so here the leakage path 
so as a leakage path is dependent on the vertical surface area so basically uh, let me say here these are this is your conductor so this is your conductor and here i am having a groove groove on the top end of the pin insulator and uh, this is my galvanized pin and these are my range sheets so here from this conductor let me say here is i am having the conductor so the leakage path is dependent on the vertical surface of the porcelain shells being used and uh, in order it is desirable to have the high or larger vertical surface area to have the lengthy leakage path so in order to have the lengthy leakage path the vertical surface area should be maximized and for these for these reason we are going for one or two or more rain sheds so they can be also called as the rain sheds or petticoats in order to have the lengthy leakage path we are going for the rain sheds as well as the petticoats and these rain sheds and the petticoats also serve some other purpose so the other purpose is when there is a raining the outer surface of the rain shed will become wet and whereas the inner surface will be dry so when the outer surface is wet and the inner surface is dry so there will be the discontinuation of conducting path so basically during raining it is providing you the discontinuation of conducting path over the wet pin insulator so this is the other purpose of the rain shed so let us see so this is about the 11 kv now if you go to the in higher voltage like 33 kv and 63 kv 66 kv the manufacturing of one part porcelain pin insulator becomes difficult because in the higher voltage like 33 kv or 66 kv what happens is the thickness of the porcelain shell increases so what happens is the thickness of the porcelain material used increases and a quite thick single piece porcelain pin insulator manufacturing is practically not possible so in order to overcome this effect what we are doing is we are fixing together several porcelain shells with the help of portland cement so with the help of portland cement we are fixing together some porcelain shells with the help of portland cement to enable them for higher kvs so for the 33 kv basically we are going for the two part pin insulator and for the 66 kv we are going for the three part pin insulator so now coming to the design of the pin insulator so the designing as we have seen that the top end of the insulator is having a groove and that groove this is a, this portion is a groove and that groove is housing your conductor and uh, the bottom end of the insulator is sub supported by the metallic structure which is at the earth potential so this is the live wire and this is at the earth potential so basically the insulator have to bear or sustain the potential stresses between the live wire and the earth potential so the shortest distance between the live conductor and the earth part over the surrounding of the insulator along which the electric discharge can place through air is nothing but your flash over distance so once again i am repeating the shortest distance between the live conductor as well as the pin which is at the earth potential along the surrounding of the insulator body along which the electric discharge can take place through air is nothing but your flash over distance it is nothing but your flash over distance and when it is raining so if i say this is my length a from the conductor to the first rain shed and uh, this is my length b and this is my length c so during raining the outer part of the insulator becomes wet suppose let me say this is the outer first outer part it becomes wet and whereas the inner part is dry 
So as it become wet, that means this part has come under conduction and in that way your flash over distance is going to be decreased. So in order to overcome this decrease of the flash over distance, so here, here again you are having D. So initially when there is no raining, the flash over distance will be the summation of A plus B plus C plus D and when it is when it has rain or during raining the outer part of the top end petticoat becomes wet that means this comes under conduction and whereas during raining the flash over distance will be B plus C plus D that means the flash over distance has decreased and in order to overcome this decrease in the flash over voltage what we are doing is the top petticoat is designed of umbrella type. So this petticoat is designed of umbrella type such that the rest of the lower porcelain parts will come under this porcelain such that they won't become wet. So this is one thing and the inclination of this top, top petticoat should be as small as possible. The incl inclination of the top petticoat should be as small as possible in order to have the maximum flash over distance. So when the inclination is less, if I say this is my, uh, if I say the inclination is like this, so this will cover, this top petticoat will cover all the lower porcelain parts and thereby you can have the good flash over distance. So this is one thing. Now in order to keep the inner parts dry, so in order to keep the inner parts dry, the rain sheets are designed in such a manner, the rain sheets, the rain sheets are designed in such a manner that the subsurface is at right angles to the electromagnetic lines of force. So if I say these are my electromagnetic lines of force, the subsurface of the rain sheet should be at right angles to the electromagnetic lines which are coming outside from the galvanized pin. So basically your pin has coarse threads, those coarse threads will, with the help of those coarse threads, you can screw this pin inside it and in the case of puncture, there will be a discharge from the conductor to this pin through the body of the insulator. So when there is a discharge through the body of the insulator, there will be excessive heat and it damages your insulator, so therefore the porcelain use should be made of little bit thickness. So the porcelain should be made of little higher thickness in order to avoid the damage to the insulator. So now if we discuss about the safety factor, the safety factor is nothing but the ratio of the puncture strength, it is nothing but the ratio of the puncture strength to the flash over voltage and the puncture strength is not desirable as it damages the insulator body due to excessive heat and the safety factor for the pin insulator is about 10 and uh, this should be high enough such that the flash over should take place before the insulator gets punctured. So this is about your uh, pin insulator. Now talking about the post insulator, so this is how your post insulator looks. The post insulator can be set to similar to the pin insulator but this can be used for the higher voltage applications and uh, this has higher number of petticoats, this has higher number of petticoats that means greater height and it can be used for the high voltage applications and these type of insulators can be mounted on the su supporting structures horizontally as well as vertically and you can see this is a single piece of porcelain with the metallic fixing arrangements provided at the top as well as the bottom. So at the top is provided and at the bottom is also there is a metallic fixing arrangement. So now let us discuss the differences between the pin insulator and the post insulator. So if I say this is my pin and this is my post, your pin insulator are economical. So they are simple, economical and efficient up to 33 kV only. So they are up to they are economical up to 33 kV and this post insulator can be used for lower voltage as well as for the higher voltage, lower as well as higher and it is basically a single stack, it is basically a single stack, it, it is a single 
or a multiple stack it can be single or multiple stacks and here the conductor is fixed at the top of the insulator by binding so by binding with the annealed wire of the same material of the conductor if the conductor is of copper so this should be of copper so annealed material annealed material of the that is the same material of the conducting wire and here we have seen that the conductor is binded so here the conductor is fixed at the top by binding and here there is a connector clamp so through the connector clamp we are housing the conductor so and the other difference you can see is here the metallic fixing arrangement is provided at the top as well as the bottom whereas the metallic arrangement is at the bottom end only so that is the other difference and uh, moreover the other difference you can say is here the two or in post insulator the two or more insulators can be fixed together for higher voltage applications they can be fixed together for higher voltage applications but this pin insulator cannot be fixed together for higher voltage applications so these are the basically differences between the pin insulator and the post insulator and the post insulator are the are used as a supporting for the bus bars so they are used as supporting for the bus bars and for disconnecting the switches in substations so this is all about the pin insulator and the post insulator i hope you understood well please subscribe to the channel thank you